Hello guys, so I'm in the process of swapping my Nebula V2 to the Nebula Pro. That's what I've been running on this drone for a little while. And I'm also going to let you know what I think about those two cameras. And also, I'm going to show you how to swap those two cameras. It is a pretty easy process. I hope guys that you're going to enjoy the video. So there is something I need to bring to your attention, guys. If you are planning on getting this camera, as you look at the box that comes with the camera, you can see there's a camera on top and there's clearly something missing in the bottom. Now, vendors are giving you two options. You can either buy the camera by itself or you can buy the camera with the cable. The camera by itself is about 55 bucks and with the cable, the cable is a 12 centimeter cable and that bumped the price up to 63 bucks. I don't really like it because just looking at the box, you can tell that uh, from the manufacturer, the camera does come with the cable itself. And it seems like vendor are taking the cable out and setting it separately. Of course, we really got no control over that. It is what it is, but I just want to bring you guys to let you know about that little fact that if you're planning on buying this camera, it's going to give you the option to either buy the camera by itself or to buy the camera with the cable. Awfully, if you're buying this camera, you already have a Vista and you already have a cable for the camera, so you don't need to buy the cable itself. Let's talk a little more about the V2, the Nebula V2. It does have a lot of shortcomings. It wasn't really well received by the community. It's just because of all the different shortcomings it has. But overall, I have to say, guys, I actually like this camera. It is not as bad as people say. It's actually much better than uh, the best analog system you may have out there. Sorry about that, guys. But the one thing that really bothered me about this camera, and that was pretty much the one reason I am going to switch to it, is that I didn't really feel connected to my drone when I was flying it. And the reason is the delay on the transmission is much more bigger or longer than the one on the regular digital camera, DJI camera, or on the regular Vista camera, you can see. The delay on the Nebula V2 is much longer. It is about 35 milliseconds. That's the lowest I haven't seen it on my drone. While on the other, on the regular DJI camera, it is about 21. That's what I see on my drone at least. So the delay is really what throw me off. You know what this camera is good for is for a long range drone. If you're planning on doing a long range, uh, building a long range drone, this will be a perfect camera for you because you don't really need a quick response from, from your drone. So uh, V2 for long range, good. But for freestyle drone, forget about it. There is one feature on the Nebula V2 which is not available on either the Nebula Pro or the DJI camera is the ability to change different settings on a camera. In order to do that, the only thing you need to do is connect one of those little joysticks to the camera and this is going to give you access to multiple functions and the camera. But what I end up doing, which is actually I think is even much better, is that I connected my camera to the run cam control adapter and this allowed me to make changes to my camera just using my transmitter. It is a very nice feature and this is something I definitely gonna miss with the Nebula V2 because all the other cameras are not able to do that. But that is pretty much very neat. You can go in into your camera and pretty much change all the setting you want. You can change all that, make adjustment on the picture. So it is a very neat little thing that I'm definitely gonna meet, uh, gonna miss. Swapping the camera is a pretty straightforward process. You just need to unscrew uh, the back cover on a V2. And you gotta be very careful removing the MIPI connector. There is nothing attaching it to the camera. It, it, it is just pressure that keeping it in place. So, but still be careful. You don't want to break anything. You don't want to mess up the cable itself. Only thing you have to do is just put a flat screwdriver and put this on the side and pop it out of place. Once that's done, you pretty much repeat the same process with the 
Nebula Pro. Nebula Pro does come with four different screws, so just unscrew all four of them. Uh, take the back cover off, and that should give you access to the back of the camera. And just put the MIPI back into the new camera, and it only goes one way, so you can't really mess it up. And just apply some pressure to put keep it in place, and that's really the only thing you have to do. After that, just put the camera cover back in place and put the screw back in place, and you are pretty much done. What we are looking at is picture from both the Nebula Pro and the DJI camera. I decided to have both of them together so you guys can kind of judge if there is major difference between the two cameras. Of course, I didn't label which one is which. I kind of going to let you guys try to guess which one is the Nebula Pro and which one is the DJI camera. I have to give kudos to Cadex. They did a pretty good job on this camera. It is a lot, lot more closer than the DJI camera. The main difference between the two cameras, I have to say, is one is slightly brighter than the other. But except for that, the quality of the image is pretty much identical. The details are exactly the same. And the latency is actually the same as the DJI camera. All right, guys, you have a uh, chance to guess which one is which. I'm going to let you know which one is which. The one on top is actually the DJI camera, and the one on the bottom is the Nebula Pro. As you can see, no much major difference between the two of them. I definitely like this camera. And thank you for watching, guys. And as usual, I hope that you like this video. Please hit the like button, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys and see you on the next one.